Patterns are made for the average figure, but very few of us have that average figure. That's why it's necessary for us to take care of these individual differences before we ever cut out our dress. Now I'm going to show you how to alter the blouse pattern so it'll be your pattern. The pattern will be perfect for you alone. We'll start by measuring the front blouse length. Measure from the high point at the neckline, at the seam line, and measure down to the seam line at the waist. And that's 18 inches. And we'll compare this measurement with your body measurement. These are the measurements we're going to use, but of course you'll use your own measurements. The pattern measured 18 inches. The body measurement was 17, and this was an actual body measurement, so we need to add at least one half inch for breathing ease. Then we would obviously need to shorten our pattern one half inch. This is the same alteration we did on the skirt pattern, and these double lines indicate where to shorten or lengthen this pattern. So we'll measure up from the double lines along the grain line line and put a mark in the half inch. Then crease the double lines. Be sure that the grain line stays on itself and you see that right through your pattern. And then bring that crease up to the mark we have put there. And again, make sure that your grain line is straight. Piece your pattern right on across. And then pin that in place. Now if you need to shorten your waistline, it's only logical that you need to shorten the dart or pleat in this case. So we'll need then to connect a lower mark with this second dot so we have straight lines. Now suppose your pattern needs to be lengthened a half an inch instead of shortened. To illustrate this, we'll use a small pattern. And now we will cut along this line indicating to shorten or lengthen our pattern. Then we're ready to pin a piece of tissue under the upper part of the pattern. Measure down our half inch. And you better mark two or three places. And then bring the second piece of the pattern back in. Check, be sure that the grain line is straight. And then pin this in place. After you finish pinning, check the grain line once more, just in case your pattern might have slipped. And we'll cut off this paper, and the alteration is complete. Next, we'll check the measurement from the shoulder to the full part of the bust. And as you remember, that's taken from this high point of the shoulder down to the full part of the bust. In order to get the same measurement on the pattern, we'll need to line up this peak on the cutting line with the point of the dart. We can lay a ruler right across these two points. And then measure from the seam line at the high point of the shoulder down to the ruler. And that is 10 and a half inches. The body 
measurement was 12, which means that the point of the dart is not pointing toward the fullest part of the bust as it should, but should be lowered an inch and a half. We'll use a plain piece of paper and a carbon, slip it under the pattern, and then trace this dart. Remove the carbon and then slip the paper with a new dart down so it will measure an inch and a half lower here at the point. Then it should also be an inch and a half lower out here at the peak, the cutting edge. Pin this in place. Then draw in the new lines at the outer edge. These will be your new cutting lines. And then we'll disregard this dart completely. And now we'll check the shoulder measurement. In order for this to fit the body measurements, we'll measure from seam line to seam line, not from outer edge to outer edge. And that measures five and one eighth inches. Your body measurement was four and three fourths, which means we need to shorten the shoulder seam by making a series of small tucks. Tape them off as quickly as possible. Then recheck to be sure you have the right measurement. Now we're ready to pin those. Now we'll do the front bust measurement. We'll measure from the center front line across the point of the dart to the side seam. And that is 11 inches. That's half of the front, so we'll need to double it, or 22 inches. Now that gives just enough ease for our body measurement of 21 inches. But I'd like to show you how to do this alteration anyway by using a small scale pattern. To make this alteration, we'll pin a strip of paper along the side seam of the front of the blouse. Then draw a line extending from your cutting line, the amount that is needed to be added to your pattern to make it full enough. And now since we have added an extension to the front of the blouse, we'll need to add an extension to the front of the sleeve since we have increased the armhole. We'll want the sleeve to fit into the armhole. And you can tell which is the front of the sleeve seam by corresponding notches. So we'll make that alteration in the same way by adding a strip of paper to the seam, pinning it, and then drawing the same line here at the armhole seam and taping it off to nothing. And now we're ready for the back pattern. Check this measurement down the center back, measuring from the seam line at the neck to the seam line at the waistline. This indicates we have to make a half inch alteration or shorten the pattern a half an inch just as we did in the front. And we'll do it in exactly the same way. Your green line in this case is your center back fold line. Let's turn to the measurement that's four inches down and across the back. To compare the body measurements with our pattern, we measure four inches down from the seam line and straight across the pattern. This measures seven and a half inches. We'll need to uh, multiply that by two to take care of the entire width of the body, which would be 15. And our body measurement was 15 and a half, which means we have to add a half an inch to the entire width of the back, or one fourth of an inch to this part. To do this, draw a line 
down from the shoulder seam, parallel to your grain line, and well below the armhole. And then come right across under the armhole. And then cut this section out. We bring this piece of pattern back in and hold it together at the underarm seam. Then lay your ruler across the pattern at this four inch mark and spread the pattern right here until it's one fourth inch. Then pin your pattern in place. You'll remember we shortened the front shoulder seam. We've added what we need in this section of the shoulder across the back, but we've spread the shoulder seam too much. So we'll need to remove this amount plus the same amount that we removed from the front shoulder seam of the pattern by laying small tucks at the shoulder seam and running them off to nothing. Don't make the mistake of trying to compare the shoulder, back shoulder seam with the front and making them the same length. For the back shoulder seam, is usually a little longer than the front to take care of ease over the shoulder blade. Now, if you've put those tucks in, and of course you'd pin them in, the next thing is to take your ruler and make a new shoulder line from the high point of the shoulder to the armhole. And then we'll be ready to finish up the alteration at the waistline. The important thing to remember there is that when you alter one section of your pattern, as we did the skirt, then you'll need to alter the other part that will later be joined to it at the same place in the same amount. So we would alter the waistline in the same manner that we did the skirt back. Same thing would be true with the skirt front and the blouse front. Last time, as well as now, I've shown you many more alterations than any of you will need to take. I've done this on purpose so that I could show you the common alterations and what you can do about them. And next time, we'll use this altered pattern and cut out the fabric.